their the own world. idiosyncratic sense of belonging. How fitting that Kwanzaa Jones Hall and its partner, which you'll see in a moment, Jose E. Feliciano Hall, are built, I understand, on almost the very spot where Kwanzaa and Jose had their first date. <laughs> I hear that that was also some decades ago. <laughs> However, the, building, the buildings are in a very, very tangible way a testament to the love that grew between Kwanzaa and Jose here on campus and to their abiding love for Princeton. Kwanzaa Jones Hall takes its place in a residential college system that's vital to the university's mission. Students benefit in these residential colleges from thoughtful academic advising and holistic social and emotional resources for their entire undergraduate careers on campus. From first year orientation to the moments our graduates pick up their diplomas at their colleges, New College West provides all its students the support that they need to thrive. I like to say that at Princeton, we're educating students for citizenship. And at Kwanzaa Jones Hall, they have a chance to rehearse their choices and their commitments. Along with its fellow dormitories in these new colleges, Kwanzaa Jones Hall enables uh, Princeton to open its doors to ever more incredible young people and provide them with a world-class, life-changing education. At Princeton, that education means sharing their lives in a community that prizes compassion, connection, and respect. Kwanzaa and Jose, we are so deeply grateful to both of you. Thank you. <laughs> Now, Chris Eisgruber has made the expansion of our undergraduate student body a key goal of his presidency. He firmly believes that we need to give talented students from all backgrounds the academic and social foundation a Princeton education provides. It's now my pleasure to introduce Princeton's 20th president. Christopher L. Eisgruber of the great class of 1983 joined Princeton's faculty in 2001 as the Lawrence S. Rockefeller Professor of Public Affairs in Princeton School of Public and International Affairs and the Center for Human Values. He led pro Princeton's program in law and public affairs for three years before becoming provost in 2004. He served as president since 2013. Please join me in welcoming President Chris Eisgruber. Thank you, Jill. I'm delighted to welcome you all here for this joyous celebration. Today, yeah, today we celebrate the power of possibility. We celebrate the generosity and love of two very special members of the Princeton community. And we celebrate and honor what it means to belong. This beautiful building behind me, Kwanzaa Jones Hall, gives physical expression to these ideas. Together with its partner, Jose E. Feliciano Hall, this dormitory represents a first in Princeton's more than 275 year history. It represents a first because these are the first buildings to be named for a black and a Latino donor. and Jose's example, they surely will not be the last. Yeah. Juan, Kwanzaa Jones Hall represents the power of possibility. I like to think that the living spaces within are imbued with this power and energized by their namesake spark. Kwanzaa brought that spark with her to Princeton when she arrived on campus in the fall of 1989. A talented athlete who lettered on the women's track team, 
And I am delighted, yeah, I'm delighted that her coach, Peter Farrell, is here with us. She also pursued opportunities to develop her musical gifts here. And she excelled as a scholar, earning a certificate in African American studies and an AB in public and international affairs, writing a prescient thesis on the role of celebrities in politics. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Yeah. And more people should have read it. <laughs> Kwanzaa. <laughs> Kwanzaa went on to earn an MA in dispute resolution from the Pepperdine University School of Law and a JD from Yeshiva University's Cardoso School of Law and for a time taught cross-cultural negotiations at New York University and served, yeah, served as a mediator for the New York City Civil Court. However, her entrepreneurial spirit and passion for music and media soon led her to create her own entertainment and lifestyle media company, Innovation Empowerment Group, and to record several chart-topping albums. Kwanzaa's current venture, Supercharged, is a is a media company that specializes in self-development and hosts a community-driven platform that helps members build knowledge and supportive networks. To extend this work more broadly, Kwanzaa and Jose founded the Kwanzaa Jones and Jose E. Feliciano Initiative, a grant-making and investment organization that supports nonprofit and for-profit ventures in four key areas, education, entrepreneurship, equal opportunity, and empowerment. Kwanzaa has served on numerous nonprofit and for-profit boards, including the Apollo Theater, Bennett College, yeah. Yeah. we have a president of Bennett College here with us, yeah. Susan G. Komen, and the Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center. Kwanzaa and Jose's philanthropy is deeply personal and purposeful. It grows out of their commitment to their communities, their desire to uplift others, and their desire to help create a better world. It is an expression of their love. We are so fortunate that Princeton, too, has benefited from this love. Sometimes this love challenges us not to dwell in the past, but to move forward, to become more expansive and welcoming to embrace the future. Kwanzaa often quotes the great Toni Morrison, whose genius was called on many occasions to give voice to Princeton's deepest aspirations in a passage from her, 20, excuse me, her 250th anniversary address. Morrison urges the university not to limit itself to being the place of the idea, one that honors traditions and preserves memories, but also to be faithful to the idea of the place, to be visionary, to welcome change, and to drive the future. Kwanzaa's and Jose's gift calls Princeton to honor the idea of the place. It supports our effort to expand access to this transformative education, enabling us to grow our undergraduate student body and welcome more talented young people from all sectors of society. Kwanzaa Jones Hall symbolizes welcome and inclusion, and it reminds us, as Kwanzaa puts it so powerfully, that underrepresented people of color, whether black, brown, or otherwise, that these people, our people, belong. They belong, and I'm still quoting Kwanzaa here, quoting Kwanzaa, quoting Kwanzaa, not solely as beneficiaries of a Princeton education and experience, but instead we belong as patrons and co-creators of Princeton and places like Princeton. Kwanzaa, you and Jose are shaping the future of our beloved university through your love and your generosity. You have my deepest gratitude and now, it is my honor and pleasure to invite Kwanzaa Jones from the great class of 1993 to come forward to say a few words. Kwanzaa. Wow, 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 wow. Oh my goodness. So I am just so excited that all of you all are
are here, and I'm hopeful that I can actually borrow a program from someone so I can make sure I'm calling people in the right order. So thank you. You will get it back. Yay! You will get it back. All right, so here are a few things that I, I just want to say. First, for those who did not have an opportunity to take photos with us, Jose and I here because we wanted to start the program on time, after we finish all of this, you can come. But this is a program in two parts. We've got part one, Kwanzaa Jones Hall. Then we have a bridge and a connector as we build and go to Jose y Feliciano Hall because we are one. We are united. And you are all, you think you're attendees? No, 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 no. You'll find out very soon. You are participants, so you will see what we need you to help us bring this energy and do. What I will tell you is this. When I think about Princeton, and I thought about how I wanted to use some of this time to speak and share and connect with all of you, I thought, what are the things that made Princeton meaningful and significant to me? So what you are going to see, and I'll just do quick intros in, in between, is a little bit of what those things are. And there is a portion, and everyone should have at some point a, a cup and a glass. Everyone have it? Let me see. Hold up your cups if you have them. All right, all right. If you don't have them, raise your hand. Someone from my team will make sure you all get them because that's going to be necessary for you all to be participants because we build belonging. That is what we do. So to start it off, what made Princeton so important and significant to me is we've got one of, he's trying to get someone's attention, but I'm gonna bring him right here now because he needs one. I'll say, come on, but you don't have to have it first. You can just use yours without. We'll officially start that after moms. Okay, so Dean Dolan already said that these buildings are at the place where Jose and I really, we, we <laughs> I sort of stood him up for a date, sorry about that. It was because there was no Uber back then, so I couldn't get here in time. So sorry about that. But what we did, instead of going out, we actually did a walk along this pathway. And literally, it was a, a pathway that is no longer here because these buildings are here. And when I think about this now and what it meant, because we had such a significant conversation then, <laughs> where we just knew like what the dreams were and what can be done if you actually put action and belief and energy into those dreams. So part of what made Princeton so incredible for me is of course meeting you. I'll say it. You got one minute. <laughs> Boy, I think I have 50 seconds in. <laughs> but thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, I, I'm just going to follow with that. You know, obviously, uh, for me, uh, you know, and for Kwanzaa, this university is a special place in our hearts. You know, it was not uh, always easy, but ultimately, it was a place of that connection, uh, of that uh, bond, you know, that, and that walk. Uh, in many ways, right, you know, it was the beginning of that journey. That journey uh, has taken us in all kinds of, you know, ups and downs and windy paths. Uh, and this is, and the interesting thing for me is that this is, uh, and I'll talk a little more about this later, it's not, it's not a destination. This is one waypoint in that, you know, beautiful journey. Uh, but I'm just happy to be here sharing this with friends and family and most uh, importantly, uh, you know, Kwanzaa, and yeah, I think as Dean Dolan said, this is a testament to that bond, that connection, that, that, that love, and that love that we share with each and every one of you. So, so, so touched, so blessed, um, and looking forward to enjoying the, this evening with each and every one of you. Thank you. Love you. Thank you, Jose. Thank you, thank you. Because what I said to him goes to other people too, including my dear mother. Come on up here, mommy dear. Come on up. So we have, no, 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 mom first, and then you all, Anzelda, we'll, we'll make it work. Just come on, mom first, and then we're gonna get Anzelda up here. So what we have next, part of what made Princeton so significant and so meaningful is 
This woman. I love you dearly, Mom. Mm-hmm. Sometimes. <laughs> and this man. time. Part of this is family and parents that were able to bring us here so that we could benefit and be benefactors of a place like this. So mom and after mom, her sister as representatives of all of our family and the ancestors, Aunt Zelda Powell will be pouring libations in honor of the ancestors because if not for them, There is no us. Well, all I can say is everyone has said everything. I mean, (laughs) what can I say? Okay, President Chris, don't want to be formal. Joe, thank you. And to all of our family and friends who are family, we are just so thankful that you are here to share with us today. Am I down to 15? That's right. Okay. <laughs> uh, Kwanzaa and Jose, I say that Luis and Natilda? Nalita? I've been practicing this <laughs> because I say Nellie. <laughs> and uh, Marion, oh Marion, rest in peace, and Dorothy. We are so proud of you as we speak here today. I wrote notes, but now I gotta be <laughs> Whatever. And now I can't see. <laughs> that'll make that'll make you make me cry. That's not nice. Okay. <laughs> oh goodness. You know, you two took a position that we are getting away from erasure and we are including thank you. So much. Where's that word? <laughs> Can you read my writing? <laughs> Inclusivity, not just for the present, but for the future and for generations to come. And your gifts and your love for Princeton is truly in the nation's service and in the service of the nation. And humanity. Huh? See, when we were here, it was in the nation service and service of the nation. So mom is remembering when we were here. Well, little did I know when I was going up and down 95 that this would happen. So they, so they have to correct me. Thank you, mom. Aunt Zelda Powell. So as I bring my aunt up, who is going to be giving libations, because in our tradition, this is what we do. We honor the ancestors. This is really the start off of the next portion where we're having a few other folks come up because it's significant of what Princeton represents and represented to me. And so as she pours afterwards, everyone else will be doing a toast who comes up. And as they toast, raise your glass. In gratitude to the source of all creations, I call the ancestors of Kwanzaa, Marion Jones, and Jose Enrique Feliciano. I invite them to join us here in this moment 
and this spectacular occasion. It is fitting that the ancestors are here. I will pour to the north, to the south, to the east, and to the west, and I'll have to step away from the microphone to do that. But the ancestors are proud. They are happy. They are happy to be here. And we all love you. <laughs> okay. Ancestors are here and they are happy. Ashe. Thank you, Zelda. I love you too. All right, so we have Dr. Rasan Harris, and part of what Princeton is about and what was significant for me is really hitting home the idea of service. And Rasan represents the best of what Princeton offers in terms of service. He's dedicated his life and career to serve. So, we're on. My brown-skinned, curly-haired daughter and I walked through campus after leaving the Princeton women's soccer game on October 22nd. And this father wanted to show his daughter what his friends built. So he walked up the Kwanzaa Jones Hall. And as I was taking a selfie, a blonde haired, blue eyed lacrosse player comes out and says, can I take that picture? Thank you for showing what Princeton love can be so that we can show up inside Princeton. What's the world for you if you can't make it up the way you want it. Toni Morrison, jazz. <laughs> Lo que construimos, what we built, we built in here. Cheers. Oh my gosh. And now, what Princeton represents more than anything is connections and being connected and building bridges and lifelong friendships. <laughs> and I have Onita Ortiz, who's here, and Dr. Richardson, who is part of all of our group of women. Anita, you want to come up or you want to do it from here? Oh. Because oh. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it together. They started it last night at Nassau Inn and then showed me a video. All right. But please, would you also do it? Can you walk by them too? I will. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hi, everyone. So, Kwanzaa knows this story, but this is for all of you. So, our circle of friends was born in the summer of 89. During FSOP, which was an orientation program for first year students, because we don't say freshmen anymore. Uh, <laughs> It blossomed in Butler College, just up the way, under the legendary waffled ceilings of 1942 Hall. And we even welcomed a friend from Forbes because we believed in inclusion even back then. <laughs> we resembled an ad from the United Colors of Benetton, not because of our model looks, but because we came from different places. We had different cultures, different beliefs, different backgrounds. We declared different majors. We joined different eating clubs. We pursued different extracurricular activities. And you know what? It worked. In 2006, we learned that our beloved 1942 hall was gonna be torn down. And I found an email from Kwanzaa. And what she wrote, she said, who needs the building? We have each other. And here we are 17 years later in front of Kwanzaa Jones Hall, a shiny new building where a new generation of Princetonians are building lifelong friendships. 
just wow. This sisterhood of ours is an extraordinary blessing. We've held each other up in sorrow and strife, and we've celebrated in moments of joy and triumph, and this is one of those days. So I want to invite our sisters, Holly, Jen, Judy, Marquita, Nataki, uh, did I not say Karen? Oh. <laughs> Good thing I don't have kids that need to get into Princeton. <laughs> in alpha order, so it'd be this nice moment. Okay, so Karen, Marquita, Nataki, Sarah, Sylvia, our friend Gudelia, who's on a train and almost here, and Anna, who's joining us virtually here in spirit, to join me in a toast the way only tigers can. Hip, hip, rah, 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 rah. tiger, 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 sis, 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 boom, 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 ah, Kwanzaa Jones, Kwanzaa Jones, Kwanzaa Jones! So here's the thing. We didn't need the building, but we got one. Maybe during reunions, our 30th is coming up. Some of us can stay at it. We'll find out. Uh, uh, again, because Butler and the buildings were gone for good or for bad, for those waffle ceiling folks you know, maybe it was for good, but uh, um, it, it, it really is having a space and a place. So my dear Wizard of Good Friends, this is all of ours, all of you all who are here. This is us. This is belonging. Um, and now I'm going to have Dr. Michael Eric Dyson come up and I'll tell you why. Because Princeton is not just about the undergraduates. Princeton's community, it's vibrant, and it expands not only with our undergraduate population, but with our graduate population. And Mike got his graduate degree from Princeton. And why, when I think about why I asked him to come up and say some words and toast, it's because when you think of how Princeton nurtures minds, and broadens horizons, and builds bonds and bridges, and helps create educators who continue to educate. He represents part of that, which is the best of us. We build it. Wow, I'm just geeked. <laughs> Man, what an honor it is to be here today. May 2020. A white policeman lodged his knee on the neck of a vulnerable black man who pleaded for the presence of his mother and the intercession of the divine ancestors in order to protect him. That became an iconic moment. It was interesting as well because it was a diverse moment. A white cop on his neck, a black cop on his back, a white cop on his legs, and an Asian cop on the lookout. That is diversity, but not toward justice. We need diversity towards justice. And what you see represented here today is diversity at its best. Now we know some mediocre people who are in the embrace of a fatal obligation because they are unmolested by enlightenment, contend that to talk about black or brown people is to talk about un-American things. We built this building, we built this nation. This is a metaphor for the ongoing contribution of black and brown people to the betterment of American democracy. And when, amen. And when you look at this hall, named after Kwanzaa Jones, the meaning of Kwanzaa birth, the meaning of Jose, Raise, raising from birth, raising to a new birth, raising to a new issue of understanding about who we are as a nation. This occupying the most iconic space, arguably in American education, at Princeton University, versus that place down in Cambridge. <laughs> we number one, Holmes, deal with it. Whoa. <laughs> 
This is the most iconic representation of the genius of American intellectual traditions, of international intellectual traditions contributing toward the expansion of a better world. And these two beautiful people, aren't they just great to look at? <laughs> Jose with that caramel character and cuteness. Kwanzaa with that ebony ecstasy and furled in coffee flesh. Finer than a ticket on the dash, as Drake said. These people represent us, but not just in terms of words. I went back and read the letter that Kwanzaa sent to President Ice Gruber. Ice Gruber? I scared. When I read, I was like, you, you said that to the president? I wrote a letter to the president too. I can tell he never got it because he never responded. I lost my graduation ring and I needed a replacement, but I didn't have the three G's to do it. So I wrote to the president. She wrote serious, uncompromising, full of integrity words that said white supremacy cannot have the ultimate claim on the Princeton legacy. And so she has erected a building. She has done more than talk to talk. Jose has done more than talk to talk. They have erected a building that is a lasting monument to the beautiful creativity of equity. Now black and brown children who see this building, where are you going? I'm going to Feliciano. Where are you going? I'm going to Jones. Because before the building came up, they are the edifice of integrity. They are the building of love. They are the building of great possibilities. And so now as I give this toast, when the epic tides of grief stretched across the horizon of the nation, that cop used his knee and leveraged it against the neck of a vulnerable black man. But these two beautiful people have used their hands to lift up generations yet born to see their possibilities as tigers, as the most beautiful Halloween colors the world has ever seen. And I'm pretty sure in that $20 million they gave is a carve out for my ring for $3,000. You understand? <laughs> So I toast in the name of Alfred Lord Tennyson, though much is taken, much abides, and though we are not now that strength which in old days moved earth and heaven, that which we are, we are, one equal temper of heroic hearts made weak by time and fate, but strong in will to strive to seek to find and not to yield. And the great poet Sean Carter. Now all my teachers couldn't reach me and my mama couldn't beat me hard enough to match the pain of my pop not seeing me. So with that did ain't and my membrane got on my pimp game blank the world my defense came and what came is Kwanzaa Jones Hall as a monument to what God can do. Peace. You see what happens when you get a graduate degree from Princeton University? That's it. That's it. <laughs> Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. There are two more toasts, and then we move to the ribbon cutting. And this toast, for those who are Princeton folks know, there is someone at Princeton that is the glue for so many students who are missing home, who are missing families, who are missing connection and love. Kenny Grayson, please come up. Because when I was a student, and Kenny has been at Princeton since 1971. And more than just working at Princeton, he embedded himself into the institution and connected himself to students by always lending his beautiful voice and being part of the student organizations like the gospel choir, which is what I was a part of. So whenever I felt a little lonely, I knew Kenny was gonna be that parental support that was just gonna be there and make us all feel all right. So Kenny is gonna share a song with us. And it's his eyes on the sparrow. 
And part of it is because I know Daddy, who you saw represented here, he's watching us here. He's watching us here. And that is why I am happy. Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows fall? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home when Jesus is my portion? My constant friend is he, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. And I sing because I'm a happy. And I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me and you. I sang in the gospel choir and I can't sing like that after all these years, but he still does. And so the final toast, oh my goodness. I'd like to bring my sister, Dr. Meta Dua Jones, because what Princeton was to me ultimately was family. And I just so happened to be able to have my sister also as a Princeton student so she could come and take all my clothes and I'm walking down with them like, what? That was my shirt, come back. Uh, it is a true story. So again, family is what made Princeton significant for me, whether it is family by blood, family by friendships, family by connected to a space and a place. So Meta, and she's gonna be joined by Kito, Mahiri, Kimari, and Haru, who you already saw earlier today, wowing and, and ooing and aahing. And he just said, wow. Meta, here you go for the final toast. Such a historic and beautiful occasion. Peace and blessings be to each of you. Hello and welcome. Ojambo, Karibu, which is Swahili. Kwanzaa, K W A N Z A, is a Swahili word. It is spoken across many countries, especially in East Africa. Although in Ghana, West Africa, the use of the name Kwanzaa sometimes is spelled with an S, which also occurs. Kwanzaa means best or first harvest. My grandparents named you Kwanzaa. I know her as Auntie Kwanzaa. And this might be a little biased, but I believe she's the better auntie. Don't tell Meta. <laughs> but it was the right name. Because if you think about it, this is the first residential college to be named after a black and brown alumni. So on this historic day, 
We appreciate their extraordinary gifts to Princeton. The first gift our parents gave Kwanzaa Marion Jones, gave us all, was a love for learning and the law. As Princetonians would say, in the nation's service, and now we also add, in the service of humanity and justice. Our parents' motto, education, education, education. These buildings, this dedication, represents that mantra. Education is a bridge to the past and the future. Growing up, we read plenty of books in the Jones household. One book we read often when we were about my son's Rue's age was Jumbo means hello. A Swahili alphabet book. Jumbo again and bienvenidos. So now I'm going to transition to the Kwansaba, an adapted hybrid abridged. <laughs> You'll hear why in one second why it was shortened, even though we're talking about bridges. Um, a form inspired by Las Decimas de Puerto Rico. Traditional Kwansabas are a poetic form created in 1995, and yet, class of 95 out there. I see you, all right, little bias there, little bias, all right now. All right, I had to give a little shout out there, okay. So they were created as, um, by Eugene, Kwansabas were created by Eugene Rettman um, in St. Louis for St. Louis Writers Club, picked because our father, as you've seen, made me cry, now a beloved ancestor, Oh, Marianne Jones is from, and other family members. Kwansabas are praise poem, and don't we have reason to praise today? They celebrate community, African American and African diasporic culture, and are also inspired by the African American culturally themed holiday of Kwanzaa, spelled with two A's. Conventionally, the form is loosely based on the seven principles of Kwanzaa. I'm not going to read those in the interest of time, but you can, you know, look it up on your web browser or search engine of choice. <laughs> seven lines, seven words per line, and each word is not more than seven letters long. And in honor of my sister Kito and Diab in the audience, um, it also has Arabic right, and Islamic significance. So, Las Decimas, or the Tenths, Jose, is also a lyric, poetic, song form that originated in 15th and 16th century Spain. Las Decimas vary across Latin America. In Puerto Rico, where Jose, Luisa, and the audience, Louise and the audience, Paula and the rest of family members you'll hear from at the next dedication are from. They are sung and they consist of stanzas that are not seven but ten lines long and about seven or eight syllables in stress for each line. You can tell I teach literature poetry, right? There's a set of alternating rhyme streams. I'll stop there. The most important thing to know is that when Las Decimas are often sung in Puerto Rico, they're usually 44 lines long. We're not doing that here today. Got it? <laughs> um, but time, or maybe skill, <laughs> stops me from reciting the long form version. Instead, I created this Kwansaba y Las Decimas specifically for today, and it's included, thank you, Anita Ortiz, in a handout um, with baskets that you can get afterwards. This hybrid Kwansaba and Decima is 10 lines in length. They're not octosyllabic in English, fancy way to say eight syllables, and instead I made it eight words for the last tercet, meaning last three lines, and I'm going to read it now. 
Before I do that, the first letter in um, the book, Jambo means hello. A is for Arusi, Arusi. Arusi means wedding. Fun fact, I have three short ones. Quant and Jose's wedding took place on the 17th of February, 10 plus seven equals 17. Two other fun facts in the poem you'll hear. Anna Ortiz was Kwanzaa's one of Kwanzaa's floor mates in Butler, that comes up in the poem, and Alex Donier um, was one of Jose's um, uh, dorm mates, roommates, excuse me, in Forbes, that other college, the one you and I were in in Butler. The title of it is, They Build Bridges Made of Love. Kwanzaa in Swahili means first fruits. Hail our harvest here. Two halls built, forged by love's fierce force. Firstborn in Forbes and Butler's 1942 hall, each student came here to Princeton. Dean Jill, Dean Chris, President Chris, to learn their hearts yearned to, to serve now grown and sexy or handsome I might add, they both build bridges to connect dot 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 Dot, 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 dot. Here, walls don't divide. They provide welcome. Caribou, bienvenidos. Here, Jose, you engineered away fear. Here, Kwanzaa sang, danced to break new ground. Now found. Thank you. Thank you all for sharing in this moment. Thank you, Kwanzaa, and thank you to everybody who spoke. Kwanzaa, at this time, it's my honor to bring you over here to, to present you with a gift in recognition of this special day. So I hope you and Jose as well, come on, will join me at the podium. I'm going to give you a replica here. So this is a replica of the plaque that hangs inside of Kwanzaa Jones Hall. We hope this will remind you always of our deep gratitude for your commitment to Princeton. Please join me in applause. And now, now we are gonna cut the ribbon here, so we're gonna put that down. Yeah, it is very heavy. You've got somebody? No. Put it on. Maybe it may be hers. Because this is 
an episode in two parts. And we are building. I want to bring up, Duncan, let me borrow this really quickly because you've got this and I needed this. Um, at, at the, uh, that's why. At, at the end of the day, you know, I want to thank all of you all for being here. And it's not over yet because we've got to go to Jose's dorm. And what you will see throughout Princeton's campus is things that say Princeton builds access. Princeton builds pathways. Princeton builds. There's a song that I wrote, and my team, we're all here, too. And no one succeeds alone. And it's called We Build In. There's a line in it that says, because I'm not going to do the whole thing. If you build it, then they're going to come. Or if you build it, then they're going to come. Ain't no ceiling because we just begun. Don't even try because we're number one. It's for the culture. Ain't no stopping us. Because we building, we building, we building, we building up, building, we building, we building, not breaking. We building, we building, we building, we building up. We're making change and there ain't nobody stopping us. We're building bridges, building progress. We're building companies and statements. We're building connections. We're building love for this place that means so much to us.